And I'll tell you guys since we're, since we're all friends. Every character I write has a piece of me in them. Hi, I'm Lee Bardugo. You're listening to The Grisha Cast. Welcome to Grisha Cast, episode 161. In this episode, we will re- be reviewing Hellbent chapters 30 through 32. This is your host, Eric. And I'm Terry from Nashville, Tennessee. This is your podcast for all things Grishaverse. A world created by our personal spell guardian, the Bardugo. Boys are young, casters. <laughs> Hello. I didn't know what to call that one. <laughs> so I just kind of. I like the question mark. <laughs> yes. Could you hear it? Yes. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Um, okay. So we do have some cities. We do. First, we have Yucco, Belgium. Oh, girl. Yes. Proud snaps. And then we're going to Hamilton, Bermuda, Jamaica. <laughs> Ooh, I want to take. I know. I'm yes. sorry. Sorry, yeah. Hamilton. I... We started that before. We recorded, so it's kind of stuck in our brains now. I bet if you live in Hamilton, Bermuda, you probably hear that a lot. Well, or maybe not. With a tourist, maybe. Yeah. 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 Probably silly. But anyways, um, so, hi. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah? Is that good? Yeah. I know. Just like a little glimpse as to like how crazy my brain is right now on the way here okay i waved at a horse did you wave at the horse because you just needed to feel that someone understood you no okay it was an absent you know when you like you just (laughs) you know when you know, in country life, when you pass a car and you give them the two fingers, like from your steering wheel, like, hey, what's up? Yes. That's what I did to the horse. I Oosh. drove by it and it was like hanging out close to the road. And I like did the little like, hey, what's up? And then I was like, yep, that just happened. That did. I, I really wish I would have been there. I. <laughs> That's how. Did the horse do it? Did, did the horse salute you back right at all? Now. No. It was looking at me, but hey. it was probably like, what is happening right now? Yeah, it probably was pretty confused. Like, did that girl just, like, wave at me? Hmm. There's a lot happening right now, and my brain just can't, like, it's grasp into- it all. So it kind of okay. just, like, stops. <laughs> I get it. I think that, it, and that happens when we get overloaded. Yes. It's just all so this- overloaded. Yeah, your brain is turning into kind of like soup right now. I've been saying it's pudding. Yeah. Ooh, pudding. I love pudding. It's like pudding. Yeah. I like that word better. Um, so it's okay. You got me. I'll um I'll help steer your pudding along. <laughs> I and need some you know how fun that's gonna be because <laughs> you usually have to steer me along. So if I'm the one that's in charge and leading this gaggle of girlfriends, who who knows where we're gonna show up. <laughs> I had to like divvy out like parts of my life to other people. <laughs> I, Girl, I hey, to, <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. Like my AC, like my I, I don't have AC currently, so um, I had to like give that job to someone else. I had to be like, I need you to manage this for me. Just tell me when they're gonna show up and what I need to do because that is something that like I just cannot function. About right now. I can't even speak proper English right now. Um, I can't believe you still don't have AC. Well, Um, it's complicated. I understand it's complicated. But at the same time, it's just still insane. And if I were you, I luckily you're okay with the heat. We are, you and I discussed that. But I would be, Chris would have divorced me by now. (laughs) And I would well, I have I have two portable units. They're like those massive like units that are like six hundred dollars or whatever. So the guy that was working on the AC like brought those in. So I have one like my kitchen and living room are together. So there's one in there. All the other doors are closed, and that's set to like sixty degrees. 
And then I have fans down the hallway and the other unit is right outside my bedroom. And there's fans that are like blowing everything around. So it's not hot in there. It's not cool. Yeah, it's not cool yeah. like I think most people would like, but it's comfortable for me. My thing is I would like to have the fans off because the sound and the feel of them are starting to irritate me. Oh, my God. See, that is my <laughs> heaven. Because it's like blowing, especially where I'm sitting on my bed while I'm like getting ready for like sleepy time. It's blowing right in my left ear nonstop. <laughs> Is it on? So it's not rotating. I'm assuming it's just no, pointing directly. Because I had to get everything to like point just so to like get everything circulated. Science nerd. So I <laughs> I have this tank top that I put on my head <laughs> to cover that ear because I'm like I'm gonna get an ear infection. Oh my god! So <laughs> <laughs> you went down that rabbit hole. You're a, yeah. Okay. Wow. That this is fun. Is it? I. <laughs> I'm enjoying this because you I mean, I just showed you kind of how my brain works. So like Yeah. I am um, You I have no idea like <laughs> I don't think I could go in there, girl. I mean scramble. Yeah, I bet the thought process. <laughs> Whew. Well this is hey. Congratulations, everyone. This is a special <laughs> treat we have for this episode. Make sure to mark this one as one of your favorites because you'll want to come back. <laughs> um, I will. And listen to me put a yeah. tank top. On my head so that you won't get an ear infection. I won't get an ear infection. <laughs> and also because it's bothering you. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm the complete opposite. I um, I have to have fans blowing on me. I don't care if they're oscillating. Like at a high speed, just like at one side of your face. Like you'd be fine with that for like days on end. Girl, I've woke up where like, I don't have any more saliva because my mouth is dry because yeah. the it's been blowing up, and I'm fine with that. I'm like, but because no. I'm cool, I'm not hot. Because if I'm hot and sweaty, I am very irritable. Um, and also the sound, I can't stand. Like, I've gotten better at this, but it, I sleeping. It is very hard for me to sleep if it's like absolute silence. Um, I remember growing up in the house that I grew up in. I um, the air unit would come on. You know how it was like it was timed mm -hmm. almost, like it would be on for twenty minutes and then turn off. Um, I would hear it go on, and in my head, I'd be like, "Okay, I have to fall asleep <laughs> now." And then, like right when now. it turned off, I'd be like, oh, "Crap, okay, well I gotta wait." Because then I heard every single clock in the house this is back when yeah. we had clocks with second hands that were ticking mm -hmm. i would hear them all all of them like and that's how crazy my brain was but hey that's um undiagnosed adhd for you <laughs> and um i'm better now so i fall asleep to youtube videos but they are very particular youtube videos so cooking shows <laughs> no oh. no um, mudlarking. Okay. And, um, there's also this couple that plays like, they're called cozy games. So there's, there's these videos that are like three hours long on YouTube of like this couple playing like an organizing game. Mm. And so just like the sound, you know, of them like talking about it and whatever, then like I drift off, but I prefer this, um, I think it's called Northern Northern Mudlarker. That's really hard. Northern yep. Mudlarkers. It's this mother and daughter team that are from Northern England. Okay. And they go mudlarking all the time, obviously, but they're looking for like Victorian treasures and things like that. But like the way that they speak is so soothing and their accent, but like they Where speak they in a again? soft Northern England. Okay. So they have this, like, it's a very soft English accent. And she also puts in, like, it's always on the water. So you can always hear the water splashing around and the sound of them, like, digging and huh. puts me to sleep. Sounds like, yeah, it sounds like you're having your own, like, little EMDR session. <laughs> um, I am... Um, I love the, I think it's Icelandic um, 
that I love listening. Like, I mean, I think it's a beautiful language. I don't know how to, any of it, but um, that's why I love Bjork too, so much too. I like him. Anyways, but yeah, that's a language that helps calm, that calms me down. Australian um, accents turn me on. Yeah, I knew that one. Mm-hmm. Yes, Scottish for me. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, and I just went yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, um, so two movies are coming out. One that you're very excited about, and one that I'm very excited about that we just like yeah. text each other. Yes. <laughs> and I just, I, I, I saw an extended version of, I think, of the Willy Wonka one. Okay. And I was sitting there going, this is very Harry Potter. So, yeah. eh. And then as it's going through, it said, like, from the creators, creators of, of Harry, Harry Potter. Yeah, I was I like, there we go. That's why. So, and I'm not, I don't know about, like, the actor. Like, I'm very kind of, like. What's he from? I don't know, but I don't think it fits very well for my, in my brain for that. But I don't know if it's just because there's been so many reiterations. Well, so the original is amazing, of course. I mean, the original movie i the johnny depp version eh. i yeah it was it was interesting i but i mean that is not what i really like i didn't i found it odd and i found it like i love how i wanted to, if it was going to be dark i wanted it to be darker right and it just turned into I being weird yeah and like i don't like i don't want to be weird i want go dark go mm -hmm. all the way yeah um, so that's what I think I was disappointed in. And just some of the weird, like, there were just some really weird changes they made mm -hmm. to the story. Gene Hackman does an incredible job in the original. Isn't that Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder. Not Hackman. Oh, who is Gene Hackman? I don't who know. did I just make Willy Wonka? <laughs> I don't um, know, but yeah, it's Gene Wilder. He did a lot of um, comedies, like, back in the day. And he, like, I mean, I will never forget, like, I mean... This, he sings a song that's really creepy when he's taking them down, on, like, on that boat. Have you heard Marilyn Manson's version of that? I I've heard about it, but I don't it think I've actually... so much, because it fits... Anyway, sorry. I bet it, on. I will have to check that out. Yeah. Um, anyways, I love, like, I'm excited for this because, one, it was the very first book I ever read, mm -hmm. um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Raul Dahl, the anti-Semite. <laughs> Sorry, I have to always just make sure everybody knows he's <laughs> anti-Semitic um, because everybody does, um, which is so... Whatever. Anyways, um, it was the first book I read, and I really thought it was fun and creative, and I also love world building. <laughs> yeah. So this is the creation of Willy Wonka, like... Have you gone down the rabbit hole of what Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory really means? Oh, no, 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 you no. You should no. do that. I actually don't do that because it will ruin things for you forever. It's apparently a cover story for something else. And, like, everything has a, a symbolism. Oh, God. Like, Are there, like, like Wizard of Oz was about an election. So. What? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know. Um, it Are Jews involved? Okay, good. Mm -mm. Interesting. Well, but so if you want it ruined for you, then no. then go. But if you don't, then just just be innocent to it. Okay. Well, because I loved Cruella, I thought that was great. Yes. Um, like a prequel to seeing how this character becomes. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool. And talking about the Wizard of Oz, I really loved when they came out with um the great and powerful Oz. I don't know if anybody remember this, that movie, but that was really cool. I mean. If it's if it's done really well, you have it like I mean, these movies have a opportunity to be great or flop. And yeah, hopefully it'll be good. It looks like a musical, but I don't know. Like I mean, by mm -hmm. the way, because I there are moments where it looks like they're gonna sing. Um we'll see. Yeah. It, it has an opportunity to be really cool. I want it to be pretty, I want it to be fun. I think the target audience for this one is younger than the ones previous. Well, that will make me probably unhappy. <laughs> That's what it looked like to me. Like, I, I was hoping it would be more like PG thirteen ish. Um, it does not look like that at all. Like the the thing I saw today on it, 
Okay. It looked very, very I only saw small child. You know me. I'm not a tat I I barely I, I don't look at Facebook. I don't look at anything. I don't even know how I saw it. <laughs> I um I don't even know what it came up on, but um I got really excited and then found out about the other movie, which I haven't watched the preview to yet. Of Napoleon? Yeah. <gasps> oh my god. And I'm excited. So this is a Ridley Scott movie. So like oh, Ridley Scott so that's is be, amazing. That's going to be a and good one. And he does historical movies very well. Like he sticks he to He does. Yeah, he sticks he sticks pretty well to the facts. Obviously eh, like you can't be completely accurate. Like I've already seen some inaccuracies in the trailer, but I'm going to let him slip because Oh my god, Joaquin makes, Phoenix is yes, Napoleon. That's what I would, yes. Okay, but the problem is Napoleon was in his 20s mm-hmm. when he died. So like Joaquin is a little old, but I'm going to let it slip because Joaquin's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> oh, and <laughs> he's got a fun like, fact for you all. Um, literally, like 23 and me, I am related to Napoleon. So I am obsessed with Napoleon and the Napoleonic era. I always have been. It's an there's, Apple film girl. Yes. There's something. Sorry, I'm watching the preview. I'm watching it right now. Which is weird and distracting. Um, <laughs> you just keep talking. I'm watching. So, <laughs> you got this. So there is something like when I first read the like the Napoleon story and the because that comes right at the end of Marie Antoinette's reign. Okay. Like in the, in the very wow. beginning, the person getting beheaded was Marie Antoinette. So it's right. He was he was in the military when Marie Antoinette Either. went her during her reign. So that's um, exciting. I didn't know that. Like, I don't so know. So that era, moving into the Napoleonic era, there's something that feels, like, comforting for me. Like, it feels, like, familiar to me. And so I've always been obsessed with it. And I think Napoleon was an amazing person. I love his story. I've always been – I named a dog after him. You did. Like, I am obsessed with well, Napoleon. And I've seen all kinds of documentaries and – series and all kinds of stuff but this is the first time that like this major motion picture in this aspect is coming out about napoleon and it i am so excited i don't know how i'm going to last until thanksgiving is that when it comes out yes okay like when i tell you i'm obsessed (laughs) i cannot even begin and just looking at like the pictures there's this one battle scene that like pulls up that just how did they i don't it know. looks great. And I you, am going to lose my mind. So what I'm really excited about is that I don't know anything about Napoleon. I know, and I'm related to him, which, by the way, how? How <laughs> am I, like, I am a sub, like a Jew, <laughs> like, and it's from my father's side that we are, um, he's a distant, 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 obviously. But Do I mean, you have French in you? Yeah, I'm not kidding. On my 23 and me, it like shows up like I am like huh. Napoleon Bonaparte is part of my family from my dad's side. <laughs> That's why I'm obsessed with you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know anything about his history. Well, so I'm then excited to from learn. From now until Thanksgiving, then you can watch some documentaries and stuff because he is absolutely theaters. fascinating. And there's a Tori Amos song called Yeah. Not Tonight, Josephine. Right. And that's about Napoleon. I knew that. Yeah. I just, um, I didn't know his story. Um, but I'm excited. Ooh. He, I mean, he literally did, like, overthrew everything and, like, made himself king, emperor. Like, just uh, amazing. What is the big thing that everybody knows about him? Waterloo. The Battle of Waterloo. Okay. There's, okay, so yeah, that and was there, was there something else? Like, did he have like? He was short, so okay, that's the short. thing that everybody. Yeah, that, everyone knows he's short. That's why it's called a Napoleon syndrome. Okay. Um, he always had his hand like in his coat every time he like posed for anything. Um, um I don't know what. Was he supposedly like like I mean was he very abrupt and abrasive? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Short, abrupt, and abrasive. That's why it's called the Napoleon syndrome because you're short and angry. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. they did good there. <laughs> okay. I'm so excited. I can't even. Yeah, I'm excited for it too. So that's going to be fun. So My favorite movie ever is Blade Runner, and that's a Ridley Scott movie. Okay, so like- I was, sorry, I was still with Napoleon. I was like, 
How is Napoleon connected to Blade Runner? Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott is an amazing director. Yes. Um, I, and that matters. It really does. Everyone always looks at me funny when I say Blade Runner is my favorite movie of all time. But that's okay. It's okay, girl. Hey, um, Ridley Scott is great. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what I also think, like Steven Spielberg has this movie out that I wanted to watch. And I should, I had the opportunity to. It was on the Showtime while we had it. Oh. Um, the Fablemans, which is a movie he directed about himself. And his story. Yeah. But it won all these awards. I'm sure you could find it somewhere else. Yeah. So. Well, um, I wonder how long we've been just talking about things that aren't related to Grisha Cast. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, um, so our, my lovely husband just let us know. It's about 21 minutes. So um, great intro. Love y'all. Um, we could do this all day. <laughs> but um, we should start talking a little bit about some Hellbound. Unless you have anything else to say. No, you should talk about it into the microphone, though. Into the microphone. <laughs> so, here we are. You, you kind of cut in and out there because you weren't... Okay. You didn't open the gate of the microphone. Yes. Yeah. Me, 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 me. Okay, so... <laughs> Even that didn't do it. Okay. Okay, so episode 161, here we Every are. Every time you say the episode number in the beginning of the episode, my brain uh-huh. is like, What? Oh, I know. It's just, it literally is like a, a 161 num- of these things. At What's least. scary is it's, there's more than yes. that. Yeah, um, there's, yeah, so much. But this section, I think so far in the book, like this is my favorite section. What? Really? Like, yes. I think it's great. I just. I actually okay. like read through it again, like so quickly that I read through it twice because. Okay. Well, that's awesome. I am. Um, this is. This is the part. These are the kind of parts that I enjoy. Things are getting of a book because, like, you enjoy when they go through this like slow, long, methodical discussion, discussion on on the, world building. Yes, but like when we get to the final, like the puzzle pieces come together and we start figuring things out. It's amazing, and it starts moving quickly. That's like I agree. That's my oh yes, and I agree. I love those parts too. I I, I think the it is really neat to finally have. Because this whole time, really, it's been like, I, I feel like this probably has been the slowest, like, build up until we finally have had a connection to, like, yeah, um, stuff. So Yeah, because we knew we were going to hell in Ninth House. Right. And so, like, it took more than half of the book to... And we keep getting, <laughs> I mean, yeah. my God, we get to the door, we get kicked out. We get uh-huh. in, and then we're thrown out. And now we... And brought by, back. And now we've got to go back. I mean. We brought back things with us. Can we at least just stay for a minute? Like, I mean, just sit and have a cocktail or something. In I'm, hell. Hey, I mean, just something. I mean, at least get a postcard t-shirt or something. They are. Go to the merch table. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my God, I'm sure like. Oh, my God. Hell's merch table would be. Hell's bell. Fire. It would be fire. Mm-hmm. I would want to go. Um. I wonder if you could ride the hell horses. <laughs> That'd be fun. They put them in that carousel, like, roundy <gasps> round. Yes. There's <laughs> just, like, fire, like, coming out of them. That would be great. And then a meet and greet with whoever is the leader of the hell. <laughs> you know? I mean. <laughs> and then instead of, like, is it the Disneyland that has, like, the weird thing that's like the presidents of the United States. Disney yeah. World, yeah. Yeah, we could um, have just like famous demons and, um, yeah. I don't know why I'm coming up with a amusement park for hell, specifically the one that Lee wrote. But hey, <laughs> you know. Okay, so, yeah, we where we ended, we, um, which was a weird place um, just because. Helly, not Helly. Helly, yep. Yeah, Alex is, um, yeah, we find out that Heli is not Heli, um, and that they apparently have, um, something is going on. <laughs> and, uh, do we find out, like, is it the beginning of the chapter where we find out that everybody definitely has for sure had the same kind of experience? You can say whatever you want. You don't have to go in order. Oh, I know. I'm just kind of remember. Was it, was it last episode? Like, I mean. No, it was. Yeah. <laughs> 
We left it right when the attack on Heli. Okay. And like that's it. So we cuz so we start off with Alex warning everybody else. Okay. So everyone we everybody has had their own like the the person that was their victim who we saw yeah. is like now here and it's like they're all freaking out because it's, they so, were dead and now they're not. Right. But like it's weird. The, you have to talk in the microphone. We can Okay, hear you. I'll keep talking. Um so <laughs> but like as time goes on, they're less and less like the people that they murdered. And are more like the actual person. Like uh, Helly's yes. turning into Alex. Yes. But they're getting more like and they're also getting more violent. So that was a part that was really wasn't confu- I don't know if it was confusing, but like they de- they have a discussion where Alex is the only one that literally has been touched by one, um, because like yeah, Trip the other is, ones aren't are just talking, attacking. Yeah, had yeah. an attack, but Heli definitely was really aggressive. Yes, um, and luckily, I mean Il Baston is um, a safe haven because they can't get in there. Yeah, um, but. They, um, I would hate to be looking out that window. You know, I mean, it's like this group of yeah five people staring out a window at like a group of five people. Like it looks like a gang fight. It looks like we're about to like do West Side it Story. Remind, it reminds me of like zombie movies where like you're yeah. trapped in a building and all these zombies are like outside, like staring out. at you and like hanging out. Yeah, <laughs> I and this part is really cool because and I, I don't think I caught or appreciated the the deconstruction that we start to learn about these demons Mm -hmm. as much as I did when I first read it. Um, Because I remember I was fixated on the fact that we had vampires. But now... And this is where... Do you feel the same? Are you starting? Like, now I feel like, okay, it's not... I had had forgotten... Not completely forgotten, because, like, once I got to it, I was like, oh, yes. Um... I do remember reading about it the first time, but like it's still that it's the fact that it's a vampire is still like a little random. And their only explanation is like, well, vampires are demons. Um, But at least he was written in in a way that makes sense now. Right. Because to me, I so it's fe- not really Linus anymore. Right. It's not Linus. And like. To me, the way I'm understanding it is like, I mean, they're using the the term vampire because they just don't have another term. It's like they know that they're demons and that they want to they want you to feel hopeless. This particular demon feeds off of blood as a vessel to it, get to the sadness and exactly. anger and yeah. It's just a it's just a means to to the to an end. Yeah. So it's like I feel like Vampire, like the word is being used just because, yeah, they are, but yeah, I feel also like a real vampire. No, they, they love the taste of blood. Mm-hmm. They like, so. Well, they I, have to have it to like, well, I guess demons have to have it too. But well, like this begs the, I mean, this, it's int- this, this like starts the discussion too of like, if they don't do something, then those demons are going to become them and they're going to, and then, so then they'll essentially become vampires now too. And they, that's crazy. Yeah. Because that's how, like, I, Alex is so smart. I love that, like, the trip she takes us on as she figures out that Linus, whatever, Mm -hmm. his whole story and how, like, I mean, I think it's brilliant. I think it's so neat that, like, I mean, there, the whole trip, there was a trip, obviously, to hell before. We don't know why. Yeah. Um, but Linus was a part of it, um, and we – there's so much, like, little juicy little mm-hmm. tidbits that we get, and I just think it's so neat. And But but Linus didn't come back. Yeah. It was a demon mm-hmm. that came back. Um, and basically ate Linus. Right. So one thing that I also think is, like, so this is all happening – They it's not really their fault. It's really the – guy that interrupted them's fault like that they didn't because they couldn't finish right so i mean it and if he's so smart and all 
I mean, he should have, like, I mean, known what he was doing. He yeah. just kind of, like, I don't know, scooped him up out of hell. But also, I posed this question in my notes. Why didn't he lock them out? Of the best stone? Mm-hmm. Remember, he said that they were going to be locked out, and he didn't do it. I know that answer, bring- like, comes later, really, but, like. Oh, well, I can't remember. <laughs> but, um. I think it leads to, like, there's a lot of weird things because we all, like, so there's that. But also the Preter, remember, like wants to have a meeting with Dawes and Alex like, yeah. and calls them by like Virgil and things like that. So they're not out out. There's something. go. Yeah. Um, maybe he's just was really angry, you know, when like you let out a lot of stuff, you really need to sleep on it. But you said it and then like you wake up and you're like, OK, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Or I maybe should. he's busy. He could be. Just uh, forgot to do it. Yeah, luckily, but also I think another aspect of it is we have learned and I that Alex has, and so does Dawes, I think, a re- relationship with this house. Yeah. Like, Ilbeth don't, like, I mean, it literally, like, I feel like it's, I know it's not a living thing, but it kind of is. It's kind of its own character. It knows them. Mm-hmm. And I think even if, what's his name, change the locks, it would still let him in. I think that she would, they would be able to get in. Is it that, I, I don't, is it, sim, I, you said change the locks. Well, I mean, yeah. Like, I mean, I meant symbolically. Like, Yeah. I mean, that, that gave me like pause of like, just the, the phrasing was interesting to me. <laughs> so I just, I had to. Yeah, no, there'd be like, although I, I wouldn't, like, I mean, if you do get like, I mean, fired and you're not allowed in Il Baston, um, then I mean, do they change the locks? I mean, what is it? I mean, your like access code doesn't get you in. How do you, um, well, the, like the door opens for them as they like, right. Get there. So I imagine there's some sort of something they have to do to, there's gotta be some kind of inter- security system. Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously there's wards, things like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, oh, I decided to start using my Apple pencil as a wand yes. and a pointer. But anyways, um, So, yeah, a lot of stuff is going on. Um, They're freaking out because they realize they got to go back. They have to go back and they have to take those demons with them. Right. Put them back. And then this is the really cool part for me. I love that Mercy finds. Okay. Oh, and soup. Can't forget soup. Soup, Dumplings. It is a big topic. I mean. That's, again, I have a question in my notes. Okay. Is Dawes a witch? Because there was, Just like, because- Alex actually talks about that. Like, she poses that question, too, of, like, Dawes could be well, yeah. a witch. Like, as because we're, we've are we got the whole soup thing, and she heals people, and she does all these things. But, like, also, as she's doing the whole, like, coal and cauldron and, like, yeah, all this stuff, like, <laughs> it's it seems like that could be a possibility. Absolutely. Um, I think it's just like, I mean, I I felt like when Alex was mentioning it, it was just more like, wow, she really, like, I mean, she could be. Yeah, she does, like, I mean, she cooks. She knows all this stuff. Um, and I feel like if you are a part of one of these secret societies, like, I mean, but that's right, we haven't met any other witches. Um, we just know... P- I mean, yeah, definitely. It's possible, I guess. I guess I just haven't thought about it that way. Um, but, yeah, she makes some, apparently some good chicken and dumplings. Um, enough to make you get rid of your hellfire cold. Yeah, and that's not the first time she's yeah. made something, like, food-wise that heals. And then we're talking about Mercy's um, protection spell. And it's the it's exactly. the literal word spell. Yeah. And, <laughs> and Dawes is just like, okay, yep. Let's do Mercy, it. Mercy finds it, which I think is really cool. She's the only one also that's not really sick. Mercy's obsessed with this stuff. And I and I love that we know that because it makes so much sense to me. Yeah. Because, I mean, she is, she's is she been on the outside. Like, I mean, and to all of a sudden discover this is real, like, yeah, wow. Um, but, yeah, she's doing all her homework, and they're, they're going to use that big golden bucket, that crucible, and she finds some kind of protection spell, which is so weird but neat at the same time. Um, 
they um it's very specific it like written very specifically yeah. like i feel like we could almost do it ourselves um <laughs> um the only thing i just don't well, have I don't have a massive golden crucible to put it in. Also, ground amethyst and black tourmaline, T- tourmaline. and crow feathers bound with rosemary. Yeah. Dried jackdaw eyes. Yeah, I mean, we couldn't get that at Kroger, but <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it's interesting. Um, what I wasn't expecting is when I hear the word protection spell or a spell, I was thinking that it was you know something for all of them what i love is how lee turns this into it's a protection spell unique for each individual person yeah and they pretty much grab in the cauldron and you know it's like bobbing for apples (laughs) um you don't know what you're gonna get and um is alex first is Uh it yeah so and it's not a surprise we got the snake yeah and it's um so everybody's got this living thing most and it's of- like it's made of salt like when they go to Rex. pick it up like it's made of salt and then it like comes alive and it, and goes, it like, goes into her skin yeah and it does it for like i mean and i love when we get to turner because uh-huh. Turner one, he makes the mistake of saying there better be like a lion or something up in there. And then he gets it's a oak tree and he's not happy. Um, but it turns into I think it the way it was written, I see it, I think it sounds beautiful. Um, because it seems like this tree was so big that you couldn't it almost blocked him out. You couldn't see him anymore. Um, but then it like goes inside. Um and the albatross bird uh-huh. is, um, oh my gosh, what's his name? Trip. Oh, Trip. Mm-hmm. Trip's got the albatross. Yeah, he was second. Which um, we find a. I thought it was really interesting finding out that um, albatrosses are really cool birds that can actually sleep while flying. <laughs> <laughs> um, and okay, what else we got? Dawes. What is, what's Dawes have? A loris. Okay. I can't remember. What is Loris? I really can't remember off the top of my head right now. Um, I am going to... Because I knew what... Uh, it's like a um, a little marsupial. Oh, it's a, like a... They, yes. It's like a little pygmy. Reminds me of Madagascar. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Cute. However, when I think about protection... <laughs> I don't know if I would really feel comfortable about that little thing, but hey, whatever. And Uh, then uh, Mercy gets one, and she gets a Pegasus. My God, I'm so jealous. I know. I bet everybody was like, "Really? She gets a she gets a Pegasus." I would have totally been like, "Okay, nobody told me I could have picked My Little Pony." I was just about to say I would be singing My Little Pony because they were talking about how it was flying through the room. And I would have yes. been singing the Milo Pony theme. Girl, get out your iridescent <laughs> hair. I get my yes. I could choose anything from my son's collection. Yeah, girl. He has a whole bookshelf, and anything Milo Pony we have to get, like stickers, pins, coloring books, figurines, like. Oh, that makes me he so has happy. A whole freaking collection. The reason that makes me really happy is because I feel like I'm a little, like... Yes, you did that. Oh. (laughs) But, no, he's obsessed. That's amazing. I love that he, like, he really, like, he's so fun to talk to about it, too. um, Because, like, he, he, he likes world building as much as I do. And so he sees, like, the world building in My Little Mm -hmm. Pony, which I love. Um, Yeah, I get to hear about all the characteristics of each pony and their strengths and, like... (laughs) I did not see. Okay. I'm just driving around going, uh huh. I didn't yeah. know that I made that that it made that big of an impact on him. That's mm-hmm. so great. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. I remember just when they first came to spend the night with us. Like it was one of the first things I did. I was really like, I was like, yeah, we're, I'm I'm watching My Little Pony. Let's watch it. And oh. Yeah, we'll be talking about something or something will happen, and he'll go, Oh my god, that's so. Insert pony Rarity. name. Oh my god, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Okay. Well, cute. But there's that. 
fine. Um, but uh, the other fun, the other fun thing is that Darlington gets. Yeah, he gets his own protection. assault <laughs> sculpture too. But <laughs> salt sculpt, yeah. salt sculpture, but and it's a cat, but it's not any cat. It's, it's Cosmos, right? So, how is that? Po- like, I mean, like, is where's Cosmo? Like, I mean, like, where's the real one? Right? Is like, I mean, and it's interesting um, because I mean, I didn't know he was playing. I didn't know he put like I didn't know that he was. He put money in the pot. I didn't know that he needed to get, like... But I guess it kind of actually makes sense the more I think about it. Um, this team, if they if they were trying to get him out, they didn't, yeah. but still... He's going to need it. Yeah. They better bring him some chicken and dumplings, too. Oh, my gosh. He's going to need all the dumplings. Yeah. Dumplings are so weird. They are. Just because, like, I... Th- They're I, delicious. I, I haven't had chicken and dumplings often because I... I don't know. I've had matzo ball soup, which I know is very different, but at the same time, it's, it's similar, similar. right? Yeah. 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 I grew up on chicken and dumplings, Dumplings. but I can't have dumplings anymore. So no, you can't, Um, but you can have gluten-free matzo balls. I can, and it's delicious. Come on, gluten-free matzo balls, (laughs) which I have to eat now too. Come on, special time of the year. Yes. Um, But while all this is happening, the demons set fire yeah, okay. To Bastone. Yeah, these demons are getting a little angsty. Like, I mean, I understand they're demons and all, but, I mean, that rage is, like, a little, like, too much. <laughs> they're setting fire to yeah. Elbeston. See how French, ever since I watched the Napoleon? Like, <laughs> Your French is coming out. I know, and it's just the... Mm. I have zero French in me. It's so sad. Um. Well, you just wait, girl. I got Napoleon in me, so, I mean, <laughs> I'll share. Okay. Anyways, continuing on, wee oui, wee. Oui. Yes. Um, that didn't make it any better. It, um, they set fire to Il Baston. Yep. They get them out. Like I mean, right? Like I mean, yes. the point is to get them all out. Yeah. Um, but luckily, Alex uses her pearls or what? Her salt, not her pearls. Her. Snake. Yeah. She licks her. <laughs> That's to, like, another weird thing. It. So there's a lot of saliva because remember the tattoo thing? Like she licks her, she licks it to come back. But it makes so much sense in the weirdest way because when you lick your own skin, you taste the salt. Like, yeah. It's, that's, yeah. It's still odd, but like what a weird, like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so she uses her snake skin salt thing and it works. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's pretty much like, okay, well, I guess time to go home, everyone. <laughs> so everybody back to their respected or their respectable homes or their, yeah, whatever. They all have to go to their homes. Right. Their own homes. And it seems very discombobulated right now. Like I, their plan is, it's not as planned out as before. Mm-hmm. Um, and things just seem very we're trying to make it through. I feel bad for Trip because Trip gets dropped off and it doesn't seem like Trip really wants to be dropped off. Yeah. Like he, he wants really, someone to stay with him. He seems a little scared. I would be too. I just wish he would be like, you know what? I really could stay with some. But yeah, he gets dropped off and he mm-hmm. Turner. I so, love that he fist bumps him though. And that's the whole thing, is it like everybody goes home alone except for Alex and Mercy, like, they get to go together. And they walk into their roommate who's like, (laughs) where have y'all been? At least Alex doesn't have to be alone anymore with this whole, like, cover-up thing. But it's... And they're like, where should we live next year? (laughs) Right. Alex is like, I don't know if I go to school anymore. (laughs) Yeah, dude, give me a minute. Right. I love that she... I can't remember whether it's that same day or whatever, but the next part is we do see Alex sees Linus outside or the vampire guy outside her window. Yeah, Helly and Linus both are like hanging out outside of her window. But Linus is the big thing that like is a huge thing because like that is. She knows that she can't beat him. Yep. And she's on the phone with Dawes at that exact moment. And I love what Dawes takes her through. Like I, 
I guess I've never heard that type of like therapy of calming someone down. Yeah. And like I yeah, just because you're putting them back in reality. Yeah, yeah. I I love it. It's um I literally like highlighted it in my Kindle. Like I need to use that for when I have because it it's bring it literally just is so I've never heard of that type of therapy to help bring you back to earth. Um I guess it's the only way I can explain it, but it's just um it's neat and you read it, so you know what I'm talking about. I just, um, it's really neat. Um, I was impressed. Have you, had you heard of that, I guess? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's three different, th- like, it starts off by, like, things you rec- you see, name yeah. three things you've seen, you see, then three things that you can touch. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then smell, or no, it's another sense. Or, like, hear or something like that. Yeah. It's just, it's neat. Um, and I love that Alex is fighting against it, like, the whole time she's like, "Does I know what you're trying to do, but it works." Mm-hmm. Um, Alex is scared out of her mind, rightfully so. But we also learn a little bit more about this whole vampire thing. I mean, it's it's daylight, but also they seem to be kind of lurking in the shadow. Um, I can't remember whether it's. I think Dawes also explains that like he, the vampire can't be away from its den for long. Yeah, um, they don't like to be away from their their den. Yeah, their nest. Their ne- Yeah. Okay. Like, I di- what's at the nest? That's a big. Like, I didn't know there were any other. It's she, just an interesting. Fact. Yeah, she just explained it as like his house where he had all of his trinkets and. Yeah, he needs mm-hmm. to get back to his stuff. All right. Okay. Well, so. Um, but I like at this part in this moment too, where Mercy is kind of questioning her future. With all of this, too. And she's like, I can't just go back to the way it was before and pretend like magic doesn't exist. (laughs) Exactly. It it doesn't work that way. And, like, I think, um, and I love that she says it. Like, I love her character. I love it. Mm -hmm. It's very real. And it's just, um, like, she's just, yeah, she, she's not all the way in. She's not, like, literally, like, but she's helping out so much. And it's just. I'm excited for her. Like, I love our group. I love this group that is doing this hell heist because it's just, they're strong. They all are very unique. And I know that we've got, spoiler alert, there's more books coming. I can't wait to see more of where these characters take us to. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of room for growth. Um, is that where it ends, though? Well, so... No. Turner calls about the right. thing, about the murderers, like, and then Alex kind of does the same thing I was doing of like, oh, yeah, that was also happening. Right. Um, and yeah. just says that, like, he wants Alex to meet the the son because they're going back to that, like, king There's the where mur- the son kills the king, that whole story that we had many, many, many episodes ago. Right. And- um. So, but, like, that was a quick thing that happened because all of a sudden, like, Aton is there. Okay, so, yeah, real quickly, rewind for a second because he wants her to meet a suspect. Is it a suspect, yes. right? Yeah. Okay. So, Ed Lambton is one of the guys that died, and they think that his son is the one that killed him because of the story of the of the son that killed the king. Ooh, I don't know. I'm sure you get it in your. Yeah, they said it in the. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it it went. I. I can't. Remember. I it's so not... earlier in this book with the murders, they were told about the story of the son that killed the king right. and like the the three. Yes, the three kings, and then the there was roads that were named after those things yeah. too, and it all built back to that. Okay. So their suspect was the son based off of this story. Oh, so Turner okay, okay. went and got the son. Or found him, really. Has he, him. Okay, because he's in... He, okay. He has him. And okay. he told Alex that I need you to meet him because something is up, but his alibi... Because his alibi doesn't, like, match up. That's why I got confused. I thought that... Because he's in... Uh, in He's in an asylum. He's like in a mental place. I thought that that's where he 
was. I thought that Turner found him there in the like mental. Yeah, there place. was a thing where Alex was like I thought he was at this place, and Turner says that he has him. So they so pretty much like Turner finds him and puts him like I mean like you know they've got to hold him somewhere so probably I guess yeah well it doesn't really matter to be honest he can have lived there for a couple of months or no yeah <laughs> doesn't change the story but you're right we do all of a sudden do this really weird shift change to Aton yeah hello Aton yep he comes out of nowhere uh huh um but I love lovely by put for putting all the Jewish bling. <laughs> I mean, he's like, I know it's mentioned that he's got like some, his high on. Yes. Love it. Um, he's just, he's my favorite Jewish drug dealer character. If I've ever, since I've never met one, but I mean, and he even celebrates the Sabbath, you know, but. Okay. This, I, sorry about the whole Lambton thing. You're good. What's um, up? It was Andy Lambton. He was supposed to be in Arizona. Okay. And Turner says, we apprehended him outside the apartment of one of his father's fellows. Okay. So the son is, was there lurking around. Okay. So there's something. He's not also, and he's not telling Alex anything, but there's something that Turner sees that seems suspicious. Yeah. And his alibi doesn't. like match up. Yeah. But we don't know what it is um, because we get interrupted by Aton yeah. wanting and this is just basically Aton is like, I need you to get rid of Linus, dude. Like for real. Right. He's jacking my stuff up. I need I need Linus gone. I don't care what he is, who he is, whatever. Like I don't care that he hurt you. I just need him gone. Right. And Alex doesn't feel like she has a choice, but she's like, All right, if I do this and I succeed, then like you leave me alone forever. Yeah. And they agree on that. Yeah. It's a very weird, for me, I'm sorry, it's just very, dis- like, it's a weird way to pl- end that chapter. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, but yeah, eight, that's what Aton wants. Yep. And um, and if she dies, then Aton's got to make sure to throw some money at her mama. Yep. So, yeah, that's where we are. There was kind of like, I mean, it was a lot. Um, we're just... I'm excited for this because I like I really don't remember this. I've only read this once, so in my head, that's really not a lot of space where we do remember anything. <laughs> so um, it's really like reading it over again. But um, so we next week we're actually going to cut into is it part two, part three, yes. part part two. Okay, so we are going to read chapters thirty three through thirty six, and um, yeah excited about that so okay well you all have a wonderful week and we will see you all next time love you all long live the grisha verse like we're at the end of the hour so my voice is a little husky it was no mourners no funerals This has been GrishaCast. Connect with us on the web at GrishaCast.com. Send an email to info at GrishaCast.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok at GrishaCast. And thank you to our amazing staff, Chris, Alex, Michelle, 